And good morning to another session of I Didn't Know That About Wyoming. I'm Mr. Dennis. I'm Cammie. And I'm Tatum. And we welcome you to this session which we are going to talk about the early history of the gold mine in Wyoming. You know, as we think about gold mining, as long as you had a uh, pick and a shovel and a gold pan, you were ready to go. Well, you know, as we think about gold mining in Wyoming, we have to go back to the year 1842. Most people think that the history of gold started in Wyoming in 1867. But in 1842, a mountain man who had come across by the Sweetwaters had started to dredge along the side of the banks and lo and behold, if he did not find up to $40 worth of gold. Well, of course, that was just a small claim and not much happened there because at that time, people were still not coming into this area to settle. And so it wasn't until 1845, the military had been situated here and some of the soldiers on their spare time would oftentimes ride up along the Sweetwater rivers and over into what we call South Pass today. And as three of these soldiers came close to uh, what we call Willow Creek today, they started to kind of pan along the old river there and lo and behold, if they didn't discover gold. The only problem was that before they could actually make any claim, Indians attacked them and killed them and no rev evidence is known of the gold that was discovered there. And so we go for a period of time and it was 1845 that the next uh, kind of finding of gold came about and that was by some of the early Mormon pioneers who came across through the Sweetwater Valley and as they were camped one night it said that a Lyle Robinson, one of the members of the Mormon um, company, was panning down by the stream and as he uh, continued to gather gold he literally found enough gold that when he went back to Salt Lake he went to the SA office and there in the SA office they put the gold that he had found and put it into a gold bar and they said that that gold bar was worth somewhere around seven hundred and fifty six dollars well that began a cry of gold just as it did in California and many of the early Mormon saints who lived in Utah, as well as others, uh, homesteaders that had come and settled there, began to head back east looking for where Lyle Robinson had found this gold. The only problem was, the only direction that Lyle gave them was, eh, it's somewhere 200 miles east. Well, 200 miles east of here would take us to what town? Uh, Rob. About Rock Springs? Yeah. Yeah, a little past Rock Springs. Well, that wasn't where the gold was found. And so, disappointed and uh, somewhat discouraged, many of these would be gold miners who hoped to find their fortune headed back to their uh, homes. Uh, and they then didn't have any sightings of finding of gold until 1867. And a, a lieutenant by the name of uh, Cook and three of his men, once again, up around the South Pass area, which we know today, they began to start looking. And lo and behold, if they did not find what we would refer to as a mother load. Now, Cammie, can you show us on the little chart here uh, what a mother load is? Um, a mother load is a, um, a, that where, Is that where the main uh, well, the, vein the of the main, gold is? Yeah, the main vein of the gold is. 
and um, it would be um, up on the mountain sides. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly where they were digging. They were digging in the uh, granite rocks up there. And lo and behold, if in one day they didn't discover uh, gold worth over a thousand dollars. Well, they were the first ones to actually make a uh, claim stake there. Now, let me tell you what a claim stake is. Let's say that you and Tatum went out today and you started to see what the uh, gold miners called color. Color was nothing more than when they would go along and they would actually find gold. And they would holler out, color! And that meant that gold had been found and that's what they were looking for. Well, with this, if you were to do that, next thing you'd want to do is you'd want to stake a claim. So in staking a claim, most of the time you would take stones and you would pile uh, uh, stones in one corner where you wanted to set your claim, over in another corner along the riverbank where you were uh, digging, and then another corner, and you'd kind of make a square or a rectangle depending on the uh, location of your claim. And where you put those rocks, that meant to other gold miners that had already been claimed and now your job was to rush into the SA office in town and fill out a gold mining uh, claim that they could certify and make sure that that claim was yours. Once you had a claim, guess what? Nobody could take that claim from you. And so the faster you got into town, once you discovered color, the more chance you had of assuring that nobody else was going to take that claim from you. All right? All right. Well, that's exactly what they did. Well, with this opening of the uh, mother lode that they had found, uh, we come to find out that what they had actually discovered was one of the richest gold uh, veins in Wyoming. It became known as the Carissa Mine. The Carissa Mine is located just outside of South Pass City. Uh, the Chris and mine produced thousands of dollars worth of gold. In fact, interesting fact, I bet you didn't know this about Wyoming, the uh, state of Wyoming acquired the Chris and mine uh, just a few years ago. And as they acquired the mine, the legislature decided to pass a law that uh, would make it illegal for anyone to continue to mine there. Now, what the state of Wyoming didn't know, and what they didn't do, is they didn't do a study, because if they had, you know what they estimate the value of the gold that is still in the Carissa mine? Four billion dollars. Yeah. Boy, that would be quite a mother load, wouldn't it? Well, to help those that are watching us today, Tatum, help us understand, this is a very easy description of actually what happens with mining. But from the mother load, what generally happens, or often happens to that gold? Um, the, weather, the bad weather comes and it uh, takes the gold down into the um, load Depose, deposit. Point, point to us what happens there. Right, and so it was up here and then once some bad weather came, it came down here and it was there. Yeah, and you notice there are several low deposits, you know, located along the mountain. Well, the gold miners hope was to find this mother load. Well, if they couldn't find the mother load, their next hope was to find a load because a load would also uh, produce for them a, a, a great amount of value. But then what happened, Cammy? Um, uh, what would happen is they, it would get carried um, down the, uh, the river and it would become plastic gold. Yeah, plastic gold. Now the way I remember plastic gold is place. 
okay? Because what happens is through natural means of uh, weathering and storms and just the erosion that occurs, uh, the gold deposit in the mother load is taken down and placed systematically from the mother load to the load deposits and placed down into the streams where the streams carry it and it collects in what we call sandbars. And so as the gold miners were looking for gold as you and Cammie and Tatum are going to do today, you'd kind of be looking along the river stream there and you'd be looking for any sign that would indicate to you that there might be gold. And generally you'd be looking for a sandy bar area. And in that sandy bar area might be a rock much like this one here that begun to shine. Can you see the gold uh, flakes that go through that rock? Yeah, because that would be an indication that placer gold has probably been deposited down in that area. Well, the earliest gold miners used, uh, you want to put that on the board there, a wooden bowl, much like this, like bark, and this was called a beta. The beta was the oldest and uh, uh, first use of some kind of apparatus for going down into those areas where that uh, color was located and beginning to uh, filter it out. Okay, well, after that, the gold miners would use a pan. You want to reach that one for us, Tatum? Gold pan much like this. Notice that this pan has little edges on here. These are called riffles. And the purpose of that we'll show as we get down to the stream. But this is what would actually catch some of the flakes of gold or small gold nuggets that would be uh, caught up from the sand. And this is how it separate that sandy bar uh, from the river to uh, locate some of that uh, gold that we are looking for. Well, as the gold miners began to look, um, of course, Cammie, as you talked about the early uh, discoverers of the crescent mine, uh, they did a thing called uh, dry digging. And so, in other words, they used picks and shovels. And what they were looking for was uh, granite stones like this. Now, this wouldn't be worth much unless you could get the what out? Gold. So, this is where they would have to use their picks and shovels and smash the rocks. Eventually, they built great big stamps. Uh, they called them stamps, but they were uh, round cylinder um, pieces of stone and they would be put on a piston thing that would crush. They became known as crushers and they would crush this granite stone and then they would mix that with a solution and that solution would separate the fine gold flakes here from the granite stone. And that's how they would gather together the gold that they were looking for. That then would be put into gold plates and that's where they would make their money. Well, what we're talking about today, you want to put that on by the stream, is called wet diggings. And wet diggings is what we're going to do today. We're going to go down and we're going to look in the little river that we're by here. And we're going to see if we can find any color and see how much that is worth. But, as we think about that, the gold miners would generally carry a pouch with them that looked kind of like this. And this was called a poke bag. Now, what do you suppose a poke bag? We talked about possible's bag by the mountain man. What do you suppose a poke bag was used for? A poke. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is where they would put any gold that they'd found they would put it into their poke bag and make sure that that was kept uh, right next to them so that nobody would uh, take that from them. 
Um, we talked about stake and a claim. Do you remember what that was, Cammie? Uh, yeah. Where if you found like um, gold, you would um, uh, claim it as yours. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to fill out a claim and, and make it. Well, as the gold miners began to uh, look at ways of being able to get that gold out, they started finding that it was kind of slow and laborious and hard uh, using these gold pans. So they came up with a apparatus called a rocker. Now a rocker was a simple gold mining tool uh, like this. Uh, they called it a rocker because you can see it actually it could rock back and forth. Uh, the rocker, um, which they refer to as a cradle um, because it rocked, was designed so that it had a hopper on top. Now a hopper uh, was this top part here uh, and what they would do with that, and we'll demonstrate this in just a little while as we go down to the river, but they would, remember that sandbar that they would go to? Well, they would shovel some of that sand and they would put it on the top of the hopper here. And what do you suppose happened to large stones and to uh, large objects? They stayed on the top. They stayed on the top, yeah. So the only thing that went in here was that fine um, sand that uh, they would use to um, filter out uh, the gold. And um, then, by simply pouring water through here, notice that on this cradle, there are what we call riffle bars. And the riffle bars would literally catch the small particles of gold and sand that would be collected here, that would hold the gold flakes. Well, this wasn't a bad use. But then they decided, could we come up with something where we could go along a long section of the stream? Well, with that, they developed what became known as a sluice box. The sluice box um, was simple. Sometimes these would stretch for hundreds of yards. And the purpose of that was they could literally dump the sand and gravel into here. Sand and gravel would roll down. And again, you can see that there are riffle bars along the edge here. And so this fine sand that you see in this bottle, and notice the gold flakes. Whoa. Yeah. This was actually sand and it was taken from uh, up there at Willow Creek by South Pass and it has some little gold flakes in there. Well, that's that fine sand would gather along the edges here, and that's how they would be able to then take what they called pinches of gold, and they called it a pinch because they had to use their forefingers and their thumbs and separate those flakes out. Then they would generally put those flakes into a small jar like this. Okay, and whereas the nuggets, they would put into their poke bag. Now, for teachers who may be watching this, you can see that we simply made uh, replicas of the sluices and the cradles by using cardboard boxes. Um, we covered this one with tin foil because in a few minutes we'll actually demonstrate how this works and let the water run down. And so that's why we've got the tin foil on this one here. Um, but we have available a whole unit on the uh, gold mining in Wyoming. Uh, it will show you actually models of how to uh, take and make these as well as the process and the terms that we've been talking about today. So. Uh, if you're interested uh, in a unit, um, just contact us at wtdennisyahoo.com. Uh, Thank you. Now, with that, um, two other terms I want to come up with. 
sometimes just as there were those wild bandits in the old west there were people called jam uh, claim jumpers and you know what they would do mine they'd wait till you worked and worked and worked and and got all this gold and then they come in and hold you up and take your claim so with that a judge started coming into town called a alcatel and he was kind of the self-appointed sheriff generally he was the fastest man uh, with a gun in the camping town and that's why he got that position but he was there to protect you and Tatum from anybody coming in and taking your gold. Now, as you would go down into the town because you needed new supplies, the shop owners there would use a term called come down with the dust. Put it the other way. Put it the other way. And come down with the dust simply meant this. If you want this shovel, you're going to have to pay me in gold dust and so once again with your gold flakes you would generally reach in pour out just enough a pinch to put in your thumb and your forefinger and that would generally be enough gold to buy uh, a shovel uh, or maybe a pick or an axe and that's how you would come down with the dust uh, and pay pay for your goods all right so, would you guys like to try a little bit of gold mine today? Yeah! All right, well, let's go ahead. We'll take a break here. We're gonna move down by the river and uh, then we'll kind of show you how all of these things work. All right, welcome back from Cammie and Tatum. Here we are by the stream in which we're gonna look for gold today. Uh, you remember, Mr. Dennis says that as the gold miners would look along the stream, they start looking for a sandbar. Do you see any sandbar down through right here? Right there. Yeah, do you see anything in the sandbar? Gold, yeah. What do you call that when you see something like that? Color. Color! Let's all, all holler out. Color! Color! All right. Now, with that, um, Mr. Dennis is going to kind of show you how the gold miners would reach down with the gold pan. And notice you don't have to get in the water. I'm going to simply take my gold pan. I'm going to reach down and pick up some of that silk. And notice that I have the uh, sand from the sandbar and some water in here. Now I'm going to do a thing because you guys are going to do this same thing in just a minute. I'm going to do a thing they call sluicing. And that is simply I'm going to take and slowly move this water. And as I move the water, I'm going to try to get rid have as much of the sand and larger rocks as I can and you just kind of work it slowly like this and then as soon as you see color wow look at that cool. yeah there's a piece for you you can oh there's another piece that came out yeah look at that you can work that and you notice what I would do is pour that right back into the stream, clean out my pan, and then I'd get ready to do it again. And this is what I would do all day long. And then at night, when you think that it's time to rest and go to bed, well, this is what the gold miner would do. The gold miners would take time to clean their equipment, and they would take their fingers and go right along the edges there, because if they were lucky, remember those gold flakes we talked about? Yeah. They would find gold flakes that they could add to their um, production for that day. So that's how that would work. Now, with the assistance of uh, Chase, uh, he's got boots on. I'm going to have him go ahead and get into the water. We're going to demonstrate to you how these other tools of the miners work. So, Cammy, I'm going to have you just go ahead and stand here and hold. Remember what this was called? A sluice. Remember what Mr. Dennis said that you did with the uh, goal, uh, with the sand and the rocks? Yeah. You sluiced it around. Well, this became known as a sluice box. 
because now rather than me kneeling down all day long or stooping down and working the water I'm gonna let this loose box do the most of the work for me okay so this is what I need to have you do uh, chase if you will carefully without murking up the water too much can you reach in and get just a small uh, portion of that sand and silt that's at the bottom and just put that right up here carefully at the top can you reach just step over and put that right in there now we just used a little here but you could sort of imagine how fast this would work if you had this running along the whole stream and you had prospectors in there uh, maybe four or five six prospectors just as fast as they could loading up the sand and silt into this right well again Tatum I'm going to have you do this we have a bucket of water here just for demonstration and we're going to carefully pour this water down notice what happens to the sand and silt washes back down into the stream doesn't it now as it washes back down thank you as it washes back down what we're looking for is can we find any gold that's been can you go ahead i'll hold on to this look down there and see if we can find any whoa cam you found a great nugget whoa better keep that can you find any tatum be all in there but do you see how fast that was mm -hmm. all right now you can keep that gold just put it right here in one of these pans here all right the next one we're going to look at is how this cradle works it works somewhat the same way uh, notice the hopper has holes in the top the reason for that hole is this is where the sand and the silt is going to go through into the hopper box here and then cammy this time i'll have you pour the water and we're going to watch as the sand and silt goes down into those riffle bars and again we'll see if we can find any so uh chase see if you can find some lucky uh silt for us just put it right on top there as a hopper box yeah look at that now before you start let Mr. Dennis take and add just a little bit of water again if you want to just kind of hold that up. Now watch how that works. Yeah, see how all those big rocks were washed away, filtered out. Now we're going to pour the water down through. All right, now look through those ripple bars and see what you can find. Okay, can you find any? All right. Are you guys ready to do your own, own mining? Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and put this hopper box away. We're going to go ahead and have you guys uh, do. And I've got some little pans here. They're a little lighter, easier to use. Um, Tatum, if you want to, you can walk around to the other side of the creek. You might be lucky enough. There's a sandbar over there. Uh, there's one here. So if you want to go ahead and start. All right. See what you guys can find. You might have to kneel down there. Oh, look what I found right here alongside of you, Cam. Did you find one? Mm, sure. Alright. Well let's see who can get the most. And 
dance kind of down here. I knocked all your gold down. There you go. Find any more there? Mr. Dennis just found some. There's one that I could just grab and watch. Then grab it. That's what they would do. You don't have to pull it up with your pan. If you see it and you can grab it, go ahead and grab it. This is your lucky day. Um, I hope that uh, perhaps someday when we can get back to school, maybe your teachers can put together a unit like this, take you out to a small stream like this and give you an opportunity to see how lucky you are at mining for gold.